Good evening. My name is Council Member Herschel Craig, and I'm the chair of the Veterans Affairs Committee. Um, while I begin this uh, committee, uh, more than a year ago, a uh, year and a half ago actually, I promised to do everything my office uh, 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 can do to help bridge the gap that exists between veterans and veteran services in our community. As I expect uh, we will learn this evening, there are a number of caring, committed, and compassionate organizations uh, in Columbus that focus on the delivery of benefits to veterans and their families. These groups are essential in making sure our service, um, servicemen and women are plugged into the network of support they earn thanks to their time in uniform. But as I can attest, and anyone who has ever served knows, finding the right agency for the right information at the right time to answer even sometimes the simplest questions or concerns can sometimes be a challenge. And that brings us to the purpose of why we're here tonight. While visiting with area veterans, the one thing I consistently hear uh, is a plea to help bridge that gap uh, I talked about earlier between veterans and the services they require or need. Joining me this evening in uh, City Council Chambers are the people who can help bridge that gap or at least uh, make uh, crossing the other side a little easier. Uh, you each bring a unique and valuable perspective on the delivery of services to our veterans, and it is my hope that the information that you'll share uh, with the audience this evening will help the thousands of veterans who live in Columbus enjoy a more rich and fulfilling life uh, thanks to your service to our country. Uh, this evening, uh, we are privileged uh, to have uh, for presentations uh, Mr. E.J. Thomas, the uh, CEO and President of Habitat for Humanity. I'm going to ask Mr. Thomas if he will please approach the podium and certainly look forward to his presentation. Good evening, Mr. Well, good Thomas. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, and thank you very much for the opportunity to, uh, to share what it is that Habitat is involved in. And I just wanted to uh, say thank you for what you're doing for our veterans in terms of using your position as a member of council, uh, reflecting back on your military service, um, recognizing not only the needs out there, but the propensity of veterans to not come forward and ask for help uh, as a way of uh, giving some life and breath to this effort. So thank you very much. Um, Habitat International is very much interested in assisting our veterans throughout the country. We have 1,553 affiliates, and in many of these, we are moving forward with programs to help serve veterans. Obviously, our focus is to provide safe, decent, and affordable low-income housing home ownership options uh, for veterans and their families. And it's been my privilege to be involved at the national level as a member of U.S. Council because this was a policy decision that our 17 members made in advance to the, uh, the International Board of Directors. And um, as a function of that effort, we put together a Veterans Initiative Advice Advocacy Committee because this is advocacy on behalf of our veterans. And um, I'm pleased to be able to co-chair co that. We support five core activities. One is the building process, which is pretty obvious. A building safe, decent, affordable housing uh, for, their, for members and their families. Uh, mobilize to engage our military members and their families uh, in support of volunteer programs and veteran-related advocacy. Uh, to help them as it relates to finding employment so they can capitalize on the skill sets that they've gained through military service. And sometimes we're able to aid that effort through their volunteer efforts on our habitat builds. And through that volunteer effort, 
uh, we can then move forward in terms of recommending them for employment, uh, providing recommendations, which I've been pleased to do on behalf of some of our folks. Um, we encourage them to uh, not only volunteer, but some of them have decided to uh, become AmeriCorps members as a function of their transition to a regular job, uh, become interns and fellows that we have around the country. One of our goals is to help promote cultural competency for our veterans because uh, increasingly we have a smaller and smaller proportion of our society who has been involved in military service. And we can't expect people, can't expect the general public to understand what a military member goes through, especially those who have been uh, into the badlands and had to deal with um, combat uh, situations that are extraordinarily stressful um, when they come home. And so we work to, certainly with our staff and our volunteers, uh, brief our folks on uh, what PTSD and TBI and other issues that our veterans are coming home with. And then, as I mentioned to you before, addressing the culture of veterans sitting by themselves and not self-identifying when they have a need. And when we consider the nature of military service, which from the day you hit boot camp, it is an effort to come outside of yourself, to be part of something greater, to not whine, to help others, to always be there for the team, and you just can't turn that off when all at once you take the uniform off. That's right. And uh, so it's one of our biggest challenges across the country is helping uh, to identify veterans who need our help and, and, uh, but just aren't speaking up. Now, what's the need out there? Our stats show that nearly 4 million veteran households pay more than 30% of their income for housing. More than 1.5 million of those households pay more than 50% of their income for housing. And that, that clearly demonstrates that they're severely cost burdened when you consider that half of your income is going for a place to stay, and many times that's substandard housing. Given the last six years that we've been through where so many folks have lost their homes, uh, the increased demand for rental property has caused the prices to go up. Um, one of the things that we have been uh, proud to share is that more than half of our homeowners are gaining equity every month in their homes with a 0% mortgage, um, and they're paying less than they were paying for substandard housing. A million of these veterans who own homes uh, are severely cost burdened despite having access to VA loans and other assistance, and approximately a million and 400,000 live in absolute poverty. Those are figures that we put together last year. I wanted to shout out Jamal and, uh, Shamal and, and Home Depot. Home Depot across the country has a program called Repair Corps that they have been helping Habitat affiliates with, among others. And uh, uh, it's more than just talking about it because Jamal was out yesterday on our site where we are helping uh, Mr. Kubicki with his home. We're doing critical home repairs. Uh, everything from drywall to smoke detectors to plumbing fixes, moisture and weatherization, um, filling cracks in the, in the crawl space, uh, sealing up vents, roof and attic, uh, about $7,000 worth of work to make this house uh, more habitable for this veteran, more energy efficient, and some place where he will be able to, he and his family will be able to age in place. So that kind of gives you a thumbnail sketch of what it is that we're doing. Um, it's a small community out here of those that are, that are helping veterans, and, and so there's a lot of cross-pollination. And I think through your efforts, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we'll be able to exchange our business cards and, and get about the business of getting to some of those fixes even faster. So again, well, I'd like to thank you and be glad to answer any questions. Well, I'm, let me say, first of all, uh, I wanted to certainly thank you for your service uh, to, the, to our nation, uh, and certainly the work that you're doing, Mr. Thomas, at uh, Habitat. Uh, that is an organization uh, that is uh, providing tremendous good uh, all over this world uh, in the work that uh, you do and, and others do. Uh, I know that you and I have talked about it and, and uh, you know, encourages people to, to have skin in the game, 
to uh, to to uh, as as uh, they're being being helped to uh, to certainly help themselves. And you talked about our veterans who are very proud people uh, and have served and as a way to. Uh, we want to certainly encourage them when there are needs and critical needs. Uh, housing is ex vitally important, as you've already indicated, uh, to come forward. And, and we wanted to, again, let them know that there are resources. Uh, there is uh, help being provided. Uh, and uh, certainly Habitat is instrumental, is critical to, to the resource, uh, to the body of, re of resources. Uh, let me segue into this question, uh, and I think you begin to talk about it. Uh, what other organizations uh, or external partners uh, to assist our veterans in terms of habitat are you working with? You mentioned Home Depot. Are there other, other uh, uh, external partners that assist you? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I could, I'll answer that question in a kind of a roundabout way. I'm often asked, what is our limiting factor in terms of building for any qualified homeowner? And it's nothing more than the, uh, than the dollars we're able to raise. There was the movie years ago, um, I believe it was called Field of Dreams, if you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. And so I tell folks, if you fund it, we will build. No more complicated than that. Directly to your question, we have folks out there who are interested specifically in veterans and who are putting uh, resources on the table for us to help them. The Davis Foundation is one here in town that has put dollars into a pot for that specific purpose. And as we continue with this effort, uh, the, uh, uh, the goal is to engage more folks out there in, in helping our veterans. Uh, Chase Bank has been helpful to us in the past, and they have a, a whole cadre of folks who, as employees of the bank, doing banking business every day, are volunteering their time as former veterans to help veterans. So uh, a lot of this is just uh, increasing the visibility out in the community for the need and a, a mechanism for getting involved. Chase Bank has certainly shown that they do that through their program that the uh, leadership sanctions. And um, there, there are plenty of folks out there. And so we're trying to touch as many to generate specific support for our veterans. Uh could you share with us uh, the number of veterans that you have information on that you've been able to assist uh, uh, over the, the last several years, or you, you have that kind of data? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't have that disposal. right at hand. Ours mm -hmm. is a fledgling program. This mm -hmm. is a program that just came up out of the ground here in mm -hmm. the last year and a half. And so part of what we're doing is figuring out the best way to put the program together, because ours is a hand up, not mm -hmm. a handout. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing is to formulate a way to honor these veterans, to take care of uh, repairing their homes, for instance, uh, but still find a way where they've got some skin in the game. That is part of the habitat philosophy, and so we don't want to wander from that. So we've got a half a dozen or so that we have helped, and uh, we've got a lot more in these next couple of years that we hope to do. Well, I need to point out, uh, for the benefit of the public, I. I very recently had a meeting uh, with Mr. Thomas and uh, with Doug Lay at the Veterans uh, Affairs Commission. And we're looking at ways that we can partner. Uh, and um, as, as uh, Mr. Thomas al has already indicated, that uh, there's a lot of poly uh, cross-pollination occurring. And there's certainly a lot of interest and deep commitment to ensure that we're getting the work done. Well, I want to take this opportunity to certainly thank you, uh, Mr. Thomas. I know that you have a busy schedule. Uh, to certainly thank you for your work and, and uh, coming down to council to share uh, what Habitat is doing. How does one uh, contact Habitat? Uh, we have a website that's very mm -hmm. easy to get to, uh, www.habitatmidohio.org, or you can give us a call at 364-7012, and that'll take you right to the switchboard. All right. Well, and if I could just shout yes, out one other please. person, Pastor John back here with Community Development for All People has been a, a longtime supporter. We have been uh, blessed to be able to do some great work in the South End with them as partner. And uh, John was one of the original board members of Habitat for Humanity at that time it was called Greater Columbus some 26 years ago. So you got to start somewhere, and, and Pastor John helped us do that. So just wanted to share that with well, you. Well, you thank you for sharing that. And, uh, 
I appreciate all of your service and all of your work to our community, and particularly our veterans community. All right. Thank you so much for Thank coming you, down, Chairman. sir. Uh, next, I would uh, invite uh, Ms. Uh, Tony Carroll. Uh, Carol, Ms. Carroll is the director of the Franklin County Office on Aging. And uh, Ms. Carroll, we're delighted to have you down to council. Uh, you've been here uh, many times, and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I'd first like to thank you, uh, uh, Councilman Craig, and all the members of City Council for the wonderful, wonderful support you gave us in November around issue 56, the senior services levy. Because what I'm going to talk a little bit about this evening are the services that are available to veterans that are funded by that senior services levy. Uh, as you indicated, finding access to resources can be critical for anyone in need, and it can be particularly difficult for those age 60 and over served by the senior levy. We are very uh, fortunate in this community to have our one-stop shop, and I'm going to give that phone number out for people, 525-6200, which is at the Office on Aging. And we have trained uh, case managers who answer those phone lines. And if they don't know the answer to your question, they will do the research and, and get back with you. Because uh, as you indicated, it, it is difficult sometimes for people to find what they need to get something started to make a difference in their lives. Um, we, over the years, the senior levy, over the 20 years we've had the senior levy here in Franklin County, have served um, countless numbers of veterans. Um, a lot of World War II veterans and spouses and widows, widowers are veterans, and now we're starting to be serving a lot more Vietnam era veterans. So the veteran population has always been one that we have tried to identify. We always try to gather information from all of our seniors about whether they are, are a veteran so that we can link them up to other benefits. Uh, I think, as you said, the outreach to the veterans community is very important, so we've always been very pleased to participate in the stand down, which I think is in, uh, in October, and we always have staff members there trying to make the, the veterans that come to that event aware of the services that might be beneficial to them. So just briefly, the kinds of services that um, an older person might need uh, to help maintain their independence, home delivered meals, um, adult day health, medical transportation is a very important one, um, caregiver support, we really are able to do a lot of those kinds of services because we have uh, a very caring community that support our senior services levy. The last uh, couple of years, we've been working particularly in partnership uh, and, and in both city and county government, those partnerships are really important. In partnership with the Veterans Service Commission around a specific program having to do with um, home repair and housing. We're, we, it's the Veterans Safe Housing Program. And that program is specifically for uh, veterans, spouses of veterans, uh, widows, widowers of veterans. Um, and we focus on items that uh, improve home safety as well as accessibility. So we do ramps. Uh, we'll do safety devices such as smoke detectors, deadbolt locks and handrails, things of this nature. Uh, we work very closely with the Veterans Service Commission with regard to determining eligibility of uh, the veterans. And that partnership also allows us to maintain close working relationships with the Veterans Service Commission so that we can keep them aware of other services and programs that they can uh, pass on to the veterans that they come in contact with. So as you indicated, it's, it's keeping that communication 
going so that uh, everyone is fully informed about what's available and then finding ways to get that information down to the individual veteran. Uh, we have enjoyed the partnership with the, the Veteran Service Commission and uh, look forward to continuing that. Again, uh, the way to access that program as well is our one-stop shop number, which is the 525-6200. Uh, Ms. Carroll, talk to me uh, more about the, and thank you for mentioning that, the housing initiative. Uh, what is the criteria for, for the, a veteran to, a veteran to access that? Uh, two, two questions. One is, uh, how does one find out about the program? How is that information disseminated? And then, of course, what is the criteria for, uh, for one to, uh, to, to, to take part? Um, in terms of how do people know about it, we obviously have it on our website. We have uh, flyers that we'll take to the stand down and flyers that we distribute everywhere we go about this particular program. Uh, in terms of eligibility, there are criteria around um, household income. These criteria are set by the Veterans Service Commission. Um, we do, uh, again, focus on accessibility, safety, and minor home repair. We are pleased to work cooperatively with city partners, uh, CDBG programs. It's not uncommon for us to work with um, a lot, take on our part of a small project and uh, the city program would take on a larger part of the project so we could really get a lot of work done for one customer. Um, there are household income guidelines that the Veterans Service Commission um, has determined and if someone calls that 525-6200 number, we would be more than happy to go through that application process or one can be involved with the Veterans Service Commission and they will also get that person uh, directed to us. Uh, I think one of the things I would say is we don't do um, cosmetic work um, and we are not currently able to re do roof replacement. I think that's a, an issue across the county in terms of most home repair programs are not in a, in a position to do uh, roof replacements. But we try to do the handrails, the grab bars, the um, ramps, and any kind of safety and accessibility issues. Uh, what has been your experience uh, with the social economic, the, the composition of the veterans populations that you served? Now, you, you did certainly mention that they were seniors, but the social economic status, uh, we talked about age, um, active, non-active. In our, in our program, because we serve um, so many either widows, widowers, or uh, World War II veterans, we have a lot of, of uh, folks that are living on their Social Security, and um, they're in their 80s, and they are struggling a little bit. But Basically, within our program, we have a wide variety of um, individuals. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we can presume that it's a homogeneous uh, population in terms of uh, income, income and assets. Um, but I think I, it is safe to say those that are more in the, in the older, old category are going to be a little bit more challenged economically. Sure. Um, and and health mm -hmm. problems. So they're gonna sure. their needs for ramps and grab bars and handrails and those kinds of things are really uh, uh, significant. Good. What I'm going to ask you to do. I mean, there, is, is anything else that you would like to add, specific or germane to no, just, uh, the organization? That we just encourage represent? people to call the 6200 number so that we can start working with them and then try to get them referred to the appropriate place so 
And I've said that number twice, so I think I'm good. Well, good. I appreciate you doing that. Was, that actually was my question to make sure that you got that information. I can uh, do it one more time if you'd Yeah, like. you can do it one more time. 525 Okay, very Please good. Miss Carroll, again, thank you for your work. Um, obviously serving our senior population, those that have served and um, you know, we are all of us an aging population right. at this point. I'm, I've got my AARP card, right. <laughs> and uh, but we certainly honor the service of the well, uh, the World War II veterans, and certainly the Vietnam era veterans, and all that have served our nation. And we really and, appreciate mm -hmm. your uh, having this hearing, and and hope that people who are watching are writing down all this information and. Um, or if you are a family member of a veteran and, and you're watching this uh, hearing, please take down the information and get that information to the, to the veteran that might be needing one of the services that we're going to be talking about this evening. All right, Ms. Carroll, thank you Thanks. so much for coming down this thank evening. You. And thank you for your service to our city and county. Uh, next, I'd like to ask Reverend John Edgar, uh, the uh, pastor of the Church for All People, and uh, Reverend uh, and Pastor, it's always good to have you down to Columbus City Council, thank and you. we thank you uh, so much for your service mm -hmm. to this nation. <laughs> and uh, as um, uh, Mr. Thomas has already indicated, uh, mm -hmm. you have been active uh, for many years mm -hmm. uh, in an intricate way well, to so many organizations that help build our city and our nation. Mm -hmm. And we're deeply grateful for your service. So thank you for being here tonight. Well, thank you very much, uh, Councilmember Craig. It is an honor to be here and be part of this hearing, especially considering how close this date is to the Memorial Day weekend. And it is an important time to not only remember our veterans, but talk about what we can do to be of service to them. So thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, I serve as the Executive Director of Community Development for All People. We're a faith-based nonprofit uh, that delivers a variety of services to low and moderate income persons on the south side of Columbus. And many of the people whom we serve are veterans. In a moment, I want to talk about one of the programs that you helped to start and we're very appreciative mm -hmm. for. To set that in a context, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about some of the variety of programs we offer Please. and how that can be of assistance to veterans in general. Uh, one of the programs we've been running for an extended number of years now is simply called the Free Store. It provides free clothing and household items to low-income persons to help stretch um, their limited financial resources. And we find that many veterans and family members of veterans come and shop in the free store. There are about 25,000 different people who come each year to receive services from the free store. In addition to that, we serve community meals on the south side of Columbus in two locations. And again, um, many of the people who come um, because they want a nutritious meal and they enjoy the fellowship, the social interaction, are veterans who come to be part of those congregate meals. Along with those services, we also do a number of uh, programs related to uh, health and wellness, particularly an initiative called HEAL or Healthy Eating and Living. And once more, we encourage and welcome veterans who participate in opportunities to learn more about setting health goals. They can work with a peer health coach. And often we find folks are, are wrestling with issues of hypertension, diabetes, and other management of chronic illnesses. And, uh, and this does impact a number of the veterans on the south side of Columbus. Along with those services, um, in uh, cooperation with the um, uh, Office of Aging, we run a modest uh, senior transportation program uh, that provides trips particularly to grocery stores, and we welcome veterans who want to participate in that. For any of these direct services, folks can call our uh, central uh, phone number, which is 614-445-7342 or then go to our website, which is www, and then the numeral for allpeople.org. We do a lot of work around the development of affordable housing. It's one of the things we're best known for on the south side of Columbus. And this work also impacts veterans. Um, our neighborhoods on the south side have been plagued with way too many vacant blighted houses that are a negative impact on the entire community. 
So we're involved with a number of partners, uh, including Nationwide Children's Hospital, the City of Columbus, um, a number of individuals. Habitat for Humanity, as is already indicated, is one of our strongest partners, Home Depot and others. And, and in these housing initiatives, we acquire vacant blighted properties. Sometimes the property needs to be demolished and we build a new home uh, on that property. In other cases, we'll take that property and we will renovate it, often um, taking it down to the studs to gut it to that level and then to rebuild the house completely. Many of our homes are then sold as owner-occupied residences at an affordable price. Some of our houses also become rental uh, properties. And once again, we welcome and encourage veterans to become the residents in those properties we develop. Right now, there is a particular emphasis um, on a subsection of the South Side known as the Southern Gateway Initiative. Uh, you, Council Member Craig, helped to launch that initiative at the time of the closure of the South Side Settlement House. Mayor Coleman and then your colleagues on City Council have all been wonderful supporters of this uh, effort. And this initiative has several housing components. Uh, one component is the construction right now of 40 new rental homes at affordable rates. And if people are interested in moving into one of those homes, we welcome them to call the number or go to the website that I referenced. At the same time, there is this wonderful pilot project that Council Member Craig, you created and that you invite us to help implement that provides grants to existing home owners to improve their properties, particularly the exterior. And your program is targeted exclusively to veterans as the homeowner or where a veteran is resident in that property. And so what we've been doing in this pilot program is providing grants of up to about $15,000 that are used to make improvements on the exterior of the homes. We'll do everything from roofs to windows to landscaping to rebuilding porches. And we have found that this has been received very well. There is another component that the city is funding that is not restricted to veterans and that also has had high demand. And along with the city investment, there are a number of folks that we refer to as Southside champions, individuals who grew up on the South Side, have done well financially in life, and now are giving forward. And a couple of those folks uh, who are most prominent are also veterans, uh, uh, Don Kelly and Jim Williams. And so they are giving out of their personal wealth packaged with the money from the city, and we're able to make these high quality improvements. Uh, as we were help veterans, we were helping people who protected our homeland and now they've come home and sometimes they're struggling to protect their own home to be able to take care of it. And so the program that you envisioned and now is implemented is making a profound difference in the lives of a number of these veterans and their families. This program has gone so well that at the wise decision of you and others in city leadership, leadership this pilot program that was restricted to part of the 43207 zip code is now being expanded in the next wave and will be a citywide initiative administrated through um, the Department of Development as you, as the council member, watch over that project. So uh, I'm here in large part to thank you for your vision and your foresight for a trial program that is flourishing and is ready to go to the next level. Uh, I would then echo um, some of what's already been said. None of this work happens in isolation. It requires a variety of partners. Certainly the City of Columbus, uh, various nonprofit organizations, foundations, uh, individual champions, um, businesses, uh, Nationwide Children's Hospital on the South Side has done an incredible uh, job of leveraging resources to help uh, on housing and other health and wellness initiatives. And not just for kids, but people across the mm -hmm. age span. And, and so all these folks working together are turning around um, the south side of Columbus. There truly is a renaissance that is underway. And that's why we call our housing initiatives that I've been describing as south side renaissance. So thank you and be happy to respond to any questions you might have. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, let me thank you uh, Reverend Edgar, for accepting the the uh, the challenge, mm -hmm. the, the the responsibility for mm -hmm. being the f fiduciary partner, yeah. thank you uh, mm -hmm. on the south side in this pilot. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. deeply grateful to you. Mm -hmm. um, we had committed resources, as you know, mm -hmm. 
uh, and uh, you, uh, uh, you know, got staff involved, mm -hmm. and uh, we were, were able to see some tangible results yes. mm -hmm. yeah. uh, in, in helping families. Absolutely. And I mm -hmm. said, coupled with the work that you are already doing, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, has been able to make, you know, uh, an, an effective mm -hmm. imprint uh, in the lives of people, and, and that's what we were hoping to do, quite yeah. frankly. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we are in a place uh, now where we're looking and, and we're moving to expand uh, a city, uh, citywide, mm -hmm. but it's because of the results that you were able to, to mm -hmm. get right. um, and that we're in the position now to be able to move out further to expand the opportunity uh, for others. Great. Uh, kind of share with me what kind of challenges were you yeah. experiencing mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, with kind of the, the, the at the outset of this, uh, yeah. this process? Yeah. Um, at the outset on the uh, home repair initiative, uh, the largest challenge we faced was that it seemed too good to be true. And so it took some time working some, uh, in some uh, situations just one-on-one -on -one with individual veterans to explain the program, gain confidence that this really was an opportunity to have roughly $15,000 worth of improvements done on an individual's home. So to make it work, it, it, seemed, it seems clear to us in retrospect that it's fairly labor atten uh, um, intensive. It takes the focus and we have to keep repeating the message. That's why this hearing and what you're doing in general, council member, is so important. We have to get the word out and not just once, but to repeat mm. the message. And I think there's a key role for veterans organizations themselves to become um, uh, the champions, helping their members know more about what's happening, uh, to you know, go see for themselves, and then to become um, a spokesperson so that as this initiative goes citywide, uh, that there'll be um, a significant response at the very beginning and then it'll continue to roll. And as people participate, as the money is well, well spent, uh, that your colleagues will want to continue to invest even more financial resources to help our veterans in this fashion. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I agree. I think that, uh, you know, again, we had to, it's the public's money. We've got to make sure that we're doing our due diligence. Mm -hmm. I think the general consensus, the belief fundamentally is from my colleagues is that uh, these are persons, both men and women, who have served our nation. Mm -hmm. And this is the least that we can do. Mm -hmm. But we've got to find a way, and again, in having a criteria such that yes. we're able to identify those that have need mm -hmm. uh, and that we respond to it in a responsible, mm -hmm. a responsible way and uh, that it is an effective uh, end result. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, again, uh, have you identified the numbers of persons that we've been able to serve? Uh, well, have we got uh, yeah. any clear sure. uh, in, number? In this trial or pilot program, um, there'll be approximately 15 families that directly uh, benefit in the first wave, and then that creates the springboard for what you're now going to be doing citywide. So it was uh, a broad enough initiative to demonstrate its potential. Uh, we have developed uh, good intake processes, forms, and the various things. Uh, I think um, you're ready you know, to now take this to the next steps. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I, um, well, we, I guess we could certainly talk about the uh, social economic status where there are mm -hmm. variations in the kinds of uh, mm -hmm. individuals that were identified, mm -hmm. Reverend Edgar, uh, yeah. That, that we were able to service? Uh, yes, yeah, so certainly a mixture in terms of uh, African-American folks and white folks, uh, different mm -hmm. family compositions. Um, you know, there's a good bit of, of variety. On the south side in the neighborhood we targeted, we were seeing mostly uh, folks whose income, quite frankly, is significantly below the average income. A number of these folks, even homeowners, are struggling mm -hmm. to have incomes that meet uh, or exceed the poverty level. And so, um, there is a, a tremendous desire among the folks we worked with to maintain their properties well, a pride of ownership, and at times uh, just a deep frustration that they lacked um, the financial resources 
uh, to be able to do everything that they wish to do. And a number of the people we served um, were uh, senior citizens or people with some physical uh, disabilities. And so in some cases, you know, we would hear stories of people who said, well, I would have done that, you know, on my own, you know, 10 years ago, but I can't get up on a ladder now. These are things I can't, I can no longer do on my own. So um, a deep sense of pride in doing what they can to maintain their properties and a deep sense of appreciation to those who are willing to um, come alongside and accompany them, uh, especially uh, appreciation to the city of Columbus. Uh, and um, when we explained it to them, to you as well as the member of city council who spearheads this effort. And then my final, and I think it seg segues into my final uh, question, and this is important to note, uh, what are the limitations on what we can do and what, uh, what can't be done with veterans housing that mm -hmm. you observed with, with, the, the, you know, with the relatively, um, re re relatively meager resources yeah. that we have to disperse? Yeah. If I understand the intent of your question, mm -hmm. um, the kinds of work that we have been doing in this pilot project, it, it is expensive. You know, to replace mm -hmm. a roof, you know, costs a good bit of money, or if uh, a porch has become dilapidated and needs to be replaced. So there is, at one level, just the financial limitations that, mm -hmm. that this is fairly I expensive. I think it is well worth the investment in people that invested so much of themselves in serving our nation, but there is a cost um, you know, factor there. I, I, my other just personal opinion is that if we're going to go into a neighborhood, let's go in at a scale that makes a difference because there is a sense in which if we hit critical mass, then a rising tide will lift all ships, but if we're scattered too broadly in the city that's now the 15th largest mm -hmm. in the nation, um, we run the risk of dissipating our own efforts. And so uh, from the perspective of the organization that I work with as a, as a neighborhood-based nonprofit, we're committed to trying to focus resources in particular geographical areas to get the greatest um, benefit that can then ripple outward. So I think these are part of the challenges that you and your colleagues will continue to face because every neighborhood deserves to, to get help and at the same time we probably have to target certain places to be able to maximize impact at any one point in time. Mm -hmm. oh, well, Reverend Edgar, anything else that you'd like to share, any information you'd like to further disseminate regarding your work and, mm -hmm. and contact information? Yeah. Uh, well, in terms of the contact information, mm -hmm. once again, our phone number is 614-445-7342. Our website is www.numeral4allpeople.org. And at the risk of being redundant, I would just say it all is about collaboration and getting as many folks involved as possible. So whether it's Habitat for Humanity, the Office of Aging, the City Council, the Columbus Foundation, Nationwide Children's Hospital, these individual Southside champions, you know, what we could never do separately is not only possible, but it is truly unfolding because we work together. There is a renaissance underway on the South Side, and it's pretty awesome to behold. So thank you for your key part. Thank, okay. thank you so much, Reverend okay. Edgar. Thank you so much for coming down this evening. Uh, next, uh, Mr. King. Mr. Shamar King is the district uh, manager of the Home Depot. Thank Good you evening, for coming Chairman. down, sir. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, so I'd like to talk to you about a, a couple of things here. First off, about the Home Depot and the Home Depot Foundation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, from the time that the Home Depot's very first store opened roughly 35 years ago, you know, we've been committed to giving back to our community. And uh, roughly around 2011, we specifically focused the Home Depot Foundation around uh, giving back to veterans and providing every veteran a safe place to call home. Um, so along with that, so not only do we give back, but we also provide employment for veterans as well nationwide. So the Home Depot currently employs roughly uh, nationwide 35,000 uh, veterans. Um, and more local to here, Columbus, we have roughly around 180 uh, veterans that currently work for the Home Depot and the Home Depot stores. So as you can see, we're very, very passionate about giving back to our veterans. Um, 
So in 2011, uh, the Home Depot committed uh, roughly $80 million to uh, the Home Depot Foundation and the giving back uh, to our veterans. And we're very, very pleased to say that we've given uh, away in 2012 roughly $43 uh, million of that $80 million. So very, very committed to that um, as well. Um, and these projects uh, go from uh, building wheelchair ramps to repairing homes, uh, creating a safe place to call homes and things of that nature as well. So we're very, very excited about it. A um, couple of uh, statistics uh, just to run through. Like I said before, $43 million um, in cash uh, nonprofit uh, donations to nonprofit organizations, uh, $24 million of which uh, went to 1,000 nonprofit uh, organizations to support um, and repair and rehab 4,400 housing projects specifically for veterans. Um, $37 million in, prod, in product uh, donated um, nationwide, with specifically $10 million of that going to support our vet veterans um, as well. Um, and then we've completed 1,250 Team Depot projects uh, or volunteer projects nationwide, with 500 of those being specific towards veterans as well. Um, here in the Columbus market, just in the past year, we've uh, donated roughly $250,000 to veterans, as well as countless amount of volunteer hours to ensuring that our veterans have a safe place to call home. So um, really, the way that uh, we like to get our message out there is through um, a website, um, thehomedepotfoundation.org. Um, so really, we're just looking for nonprofit organizations that are really into supporting veterans uh, going on there, applying for a grant. You know, once the grant is uh, an, uh, approved, uh, with, it's a six-week approval process. Uh, then we'll come out and we'll go out and help and uh, really get back to uh, creating a safe place for our veterans. Um, so that's realistically what we are doing here at the Home Depot and specifically here in the Columbus uh, market to give back. Well, Mr. King, I, I just wanted to uh, clearly say your enthusiasm, your, uh, you know, I know that uh, you are excited and uh, you encourage others to uh, to be excited about what it is that Home Depot is doing. Uh, I had an opportunity to meet with you and staff in my office, and I appreciate so much your willingness to, to meet with us around uh, the services that you are providing. Uh, we appreciate uh, what Home Depot is, is doing around our nation on behalf of, of, of the veterans, and thank you for sharing with our listening and viewing audience uh, you know, the kind of tangible things that you are doing. Absolutely. Uh, could you speak uh, about projects that have been, you have been engaged in in Columbus and... Uh, Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So the uh, couple more recent projects that we've done is at the OSU Veterans House um, down on campus. It's a, a house that uh, basically uh, gives affordable housing to our veterans who have served uh, in the military. Um, and we actually went in and rehabbed the, uh, all of their rooms uh, repainted them, put in new floors, redid the banister inside of the place, uh, built them a shed, uh, and really just did a lot of upgrades uh, for, for our veterans there. Um, another project we did, we um, heard from uh, E.J. Thompson uh, from Habitat for Humanity. We uh, went out to a veteran's house yesterday, um, did a lot of repair work, a lot of plumbing, some electric, electrical work, really just to enhance in, in, uh, their, their, uh, his housing quarters. Um, we've recently worked with the VOA, um, uh, here in Columbus off of Harmon Avenue, we uh, install some flooring um, in there just to enhance that facility. And we're currently working um, with the VA, um, just got approved for a grant that we're going to be working on here. We have a meeting actually next week to talk about the repairs and works that we're going to do over there. Well, you obviously engaged in a number of projects Absolutely. and we're excited that you are engaged in them. Uh, any future opportunities uh, for work with our veterans in the city of Florida? Absolutely. We're, we're always looking for new projects. Again, homedepotfoundation.org. Uh, you know, we, we're actively seeking new projects to get involved in. You and I are currently, yes. you know, working on a project mm -hmm. of something that we saw, you know, in Las Vegas that we think that we can bring to Columbus. So uh, got some information on that and, and just really looking to jump uh, head first into that one and seeing what we can do to, to, to bring some more housing to our veterans here in the Columbus uh, city. Well, Mr. King, I'm delighted that you were able to come down to council. Any other information that you'd like to disseminate or uh, uh, that you'd like to share for our listening and viewing audience? No, just we, we truly appreciate the partnership with the city of Columbus as well as all of our other vendor partners that uh, help support Home Depot and really giving back to our veterans as well as our local communities. So again, homedepotfoundation.org, uh, grants are, are readily available and there's money out there to be spent for us to give back and, and we're looking to spend it. 
Well, thank you so much for coming down. Thank you for investment of time this evening. Thank you. Uh, and then our last uh, presenter, uh, uh, Mr. Jim Castor. Jim, James, if you will come to the podium, and uh, there's an exciting uh, project that uh, you've been engaged in that are helping a number of veterans, and I'm delighted that you were able to come down to council uh, and talk about it, uh, representing uh, Franklin County Treasurer Terry, Terry J. Brown, and uh, the floor is yours, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to come down and speak to the council. I, um, I'm very impressed with what you have accomplished in the last couple of years with your committees. I, uh, here tonight, uh, I'm honored just to be here to hear what these other people have done for the veterans. It, re it really uh, makes me feel good that we have people out there like you taking care of veterans that really need help. And um, I'm uh, James Castor. I'm uh, Senior Deputy Special um, Filing. Terry Brown, the uh, Franklin County Recorder, couldn't be here tonight. He's on vacation, and he loved to have been here, but uh, I told him I, I think I could uh, handle it tonight. But um, we've come up with a, a couple different ideas. We come up with a, um, about... Um, Six, six months ago, Terry was talking to a gentleman, another county recorder from Stark County, and his name was Rick Campbell, and they were talking about a new ID. In other words, this new ID would basically uh, take the place of a DD-214. Now, a lot of people don't understand what a DD-214 is, and it's Department of Defense, and what it really amounts to is um, uh, it tells what you did in the service, and it's your discharge papers that show you that you have an honorable discharge and um, that uh, you did, did your time in the service. Well, a whole lot of people, um, it's a l larger piece of paper, I think it's um, a five by eight, and they take, take this piece of paper, and or discharge papers, and they, they um, are supposed to take them to the recorder's office and put them on file, but a lot of people don't do that. And then when it comes down and uh, we hear every day, you know, we can't find Pop or Mom's DD-214 and it's really a challenge because if you can't find that and they're not, it's not registered, sometimes the veteran who really deserves to have a veteran's uh, funeral, sometimes it doesn't happen because he can't find a DD-214. So it's very important to get that DD-14 registered with the uh, recorder's office here in Franklin County. And so we decided that, uh, you know, a lot of people don't carry that DD-14 in their pocket. So we came up with a different form of an ID card. And uh, I left some stuff on the, uh, your uh, table there where you could see that. And it's, it's proof that you were in the service. And also, uh, um, um, it's a laminated wallet size so you can carry it in your wallet. And you can take it to uh, different stores. Like, uh, I got to thank Mr. King because I just received a 10% discount with my new card from Home Depot, and they have been fantastic with the veterans. And we're really um, thankful for that. So far, we weren't real sure what was going to happen with this because when we talked to uh, Campbell from uh, uh, Stark County, he said he had four to 500 people after he had a press release the next day, and it tied, it, it tied the whole uh, county up. So we decided that we would go to Vets Memorial, just be, you know, uh, a little uh, careful. And we received over 300 people the first day at Vets Memorial. The second day, we received uh, almost 290 people. So far, we're closing in on 1,000 people, and we've only had to, this... Uh, new ID card. It's only been about two weeks. And uh, this has been Terry's goal. Terry, Terry Brown said, the county recorder said, that's the first thing I'm going to do. And you know, a lot of people running for office say a lot of things, but once they get in there, they get sidetracked. But I have to say that uh, Terry Brown went through this and he asked me if I'd come on board with him. And so um, I w I'm the commander of chapter three and also, I'm also um, um, in a lot of the other organizations. But um, 
Uh, so I started asking around and, and just see what they thought about this. They thought it was fantastic. So I went back to Terry, and Terry said, well, we're going to do it anyhow. And, and I have to say, I really respect the uh, gentleman for what, he, what he's done for the DD-214s now because I just heard um, the, the stuff that they're leaving. Uh, we asked them to fill out uh, a different a questionnaire and what do they think about this. And everyone says, thank you, excellent idea. This is really nice. Uh, you saved me. Um, one guy said you saved me $300 because I went to uh, Lowe's and he, I, I bought a bunch of lumber and stuff. And uh, he said, I was, I'm very impressed with your program. And he's thanked us a lot. So um, then being um, the uh, chairman of Chapter 3, there's a lot of uh, homeless uh, people out there that sometimes they don't have a dollar. So we started an, an escrow account. And we decided that um, if somebody didn't have a dollar, or if they just if they forgot their wallet or something, we'll say we will chip in and pay for that individual so he gets that DD-214, that new form. And uh, so far we haven't had, uh, we've only had a couple of takers, and that was because they um, forgot their, uh, their wallet at home. And um, I'm really pleased that uh, our chapter is involved with the recorder's office. And um, at this time, you know, um, a challenge coin uh, from the Disabled American Veterans is only given to very special people. And uh, Herschel Craig, I'd like to honor you with this um, special coin to you. Right here it says Disabled American Veterans, and on the other side it says DAV Chapter 3 and um, um, Columbus, Ohio. And I'd like to honor this, give this to you today, and thank you for what you've done for the veterans in Franklin County. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm honored, I'm honored, so honored, Jim, uh, that uh, I would, uh, could, could receive that. Um, they, they've paid it all, many of them. And uh, I want to thank you for your service. I need to certainly acknowledge the work of, of uh, Recorder Brown. Uh, this is this is innovative. It's thoughtful. Uh, I had the privilege of being with you all uh, down at Vets Memorial, and it was packed with servicemen and women, uh, because now we have a picture ID, and for all of us, it it makes an, uh, a critical. It's a part of the critical mass. It, it is, you know, for us to have this ID with us, carry it with us. Uh, it's certainly important for the, our families, and so this was a bold, important step, and I thank you, Jim, for everything that you're doing. I thank you for your service, and I'm deeply honored uh, to, receive, uh, to receive the recognition, and um, uh, I'm so grateful uh, that uh, I would be honored in this way. Well, I, so thank you so much. I thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I like what you said the other day. You said, one generation of veterans will never forget the next. And I really appreciate what you've done. Thank you, you so card. I appreciate it, and I will, I will cherish this. Thank you, sir. I will cherish this. So thank you so much for coming down. Thank you. Thank you. We'll make sure that we continue to uh, talk about uh, the reporters, uh, and that we continue to announce the council the opportunity for our veterans to get that. I don't want anybody not to get it because they don't have the resources. Uh, we are making it a possibility to, to, uh, to support uh, to support that. Okay. And uh, we want to, whether you have the dollar or not, we want you to make sure that you get that uh, that laminate and that you're able to carry that with you. Uh, no matter where you go, the veterans have has that uh, have that has that with them. Now, Jim, anything else you'd like to add uh, add uh, this evening? Uh, before you uh, vacate the podium. Anything else you'd like to talk about the program? How can they contact the recorder's office? Well, we're on, we're on the 18th floor, and, um, um, and, you, and uh, the address is, let me get it here and make sure here. It's, it's um, I had the card here. I better find the card again, huh? Um, it's at the... Uh, I think I have something yeah, here. Yeah, you got here. Mm -hmm. five. Mm -hmm. 
It's at the county recorder's office okay. downtown on the 18th floor. Okay. And you just walk in, and uh, we have a number of people ready to serve you. I think it's 373. 373 South High Street. House South High Street. Mm -hmm. 18th floor. And also there's a number. I'd like to give that number, Jim. Okay. Uh, and that's 525-3930. Uh, Again, that number is 525 uh, 3930. Yes. And uh, Mr. Jim uh, uh, Castor is the, uh, the coordinator and the director of the program. And of course, uh, anyone needing to call our office can get uh, additional information. Jim, okay. thank you so much for coming down tonight. And uh, I don't know if the, uh, the public can see this, our listing and viewing public. Uh, but we'll make sure that we have this information in our office uh, that shows them exactly what this looks like. Uh, it is a laminated um, uh, that, uh, 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 form that has yes. the information. It has your picture on it, other critical information that you were honorably discharged. And uh, uh, it's just a great identifier. Yes. Uh, the chaplain has, some, uh, has the information back there. Just like the but picture. all of us, we, we, we are excited about this. This is well overdue. And so we appreciate the, uh, the opportunity you come One out. thing I forgot to add, uh, our, our newly elected, elected congresswoman, George Beatty, is going to get involved with this. And she's taking it to Washington. And we're really thrilled about this because this is going to put Columbus, Franklin County, back on the map. Because I think Stark County um, uh, did this, but I think we're the largest county in the United States that has done this. And, and uh, she's going to check into this and, and uh, try to make sure that Franklin County gets the recognition for this, sir. Well, way to go. And we look forward to... Uh uh, Franklin County going to Washington. Yeah. So thank you. thank you so much for coming down tonight, Jim, and thank you for your service to our nation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to acknowledge the presence of um, Chaplain Michael uh, uh, Monet, and uh, he's uh, present with us tonight, and I certainly want to acknowledge his presence. Well, this concludes our hearing uh, this evening as, as promised. Uh, this was the day to further our, our uh, communication process uh, to the general public and certainly to our veterans about critical services, uh, support uh, opportunities in our nation. Uh, as um, uh, Reverend Edgar has, has, has uh, indicated, um, uh, we are uh, the city council in their uh, move to uh, support our veterans. Uh, we are going, uh, we are moving citywide uh, with our housing initiative. Uh, for more information, uh, please contact my office by calling Sherry, uh, uh, Sherry Martin or Christopher Lytle, uh, my legislative aide, uh, for more information. But again, uh, there, uh, we're looking to support more veterans uh, in this effort around their housing needs. Uh, the Department of Development is our partner with the City of Columbus. They will actually be the fiduciary agent, the, uh, uh, the organization that be, will be working uh, to actually get the work done that will, re, that will be receiving the information, working with the vet, veterans very closely uh, regarding this initiative. We're excited about it again. Uh, we. Uh, want to certainly encourage, encourage those that have an interest to, and certainly have the need uh, regarding, this, uh, regarding this, uh, this initiative. It's not a program, it's an initiative. My expectation is to do, do it this year and as many years as we can to serve our veterans. Uh, we are very interested in collaborating with others. Uh, we recognize as, as, as an administration uh, that we can't get this work done alone. We don't operate it in, in a silo. And so we're looking to collaborate with Habitat, uh, with a community, uh, uh, the Church for All People, certainly with the, the recorder's office, uh, with uh, the American Legion, with the, the, with the uh, uh, VFWs, with others. 
uh, and getting our work done and as we, seeking, as we seek to provide information and do the critical, the critical work re regarding our veterans. Um, I want to take this opportunity to thank all of our presenters uh, tonight. Uh, certainly E.J. Thomas, CEO and President of Habitat for Humanity. Uh, Tony Carroll, Director of Franklin County Office on Aging. Reverend John Edgar, uh, Church for All People. Shamar, Mr. King, Shamar King, District Manager of the Home Depot. Uh, James uh, Castor, who is the Director of, of, of Veterans Affairs the Franklin County uh, Recorder's Office, and all of you that are here this evening. Again, thank you uh, for being here. I want to certainly give a special acknowledgement to Christopher Lytle, my legislative aide, who worked uh, diligently on this hearing, uh, Ms. Sherry Martin from my office, who uh, made contacts and continues to work hard in my office, Kate uh, Bashotti and uh, Brian Clark, our legislative analyst, uh, who has worked diligently uh, to, uh, to help spearhead our housing initiatives and certainly to uh, the staff of GTV3 uh, uh, for their support and assistance. Well, no other business before us that concludes our hearing this evening. Thanks to all that have uh, come to the hearing and good night.